Hello my schoolers, this is my school channel and my name is Abiola. In this video session, you'll be joining me to tackle the topic sort, okay, under number and numeration. This is going to be a very interesting and interactive session. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us because we'll be diving right in into the topic sort. See you in the video session. Welcome back to my school channel. All right, so what we are doing right here in this video session is we are going to be digging into the topic sort. Okay, we are going to look into the definitions of sort. Okay, how would um, different kinds of people describe sort? I'm talking about under the concept or context of mathematics. All right, then we also look at certain terminologies that will be relevant. Okay, when we are going to be operating the topic sort. Okay, then we are going to look into the rules or laws that apply to sort. Okay, how to use them in forms of examples or questions that may be presented to you. So let's start with definition of sort or definitions of sort. Okay, at first we can define sort as an irrational number. Okay, a number that you can express as a ratio of integers. All right, or a number that you can determine the exact um, expression in terms of decimal, okay? You are going to see it as an ever non-repeating decimal, okay? So this is what I mean. You know, like for instance, I can put in one over two, okay? I can express this as a fraction, right? You can see we have the integers here, all right? But if you, if you try to change this to decimal, what you are going to have is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is a rational number. A rational number is a number that you can express as a fraction like this, or you can see the decimal, okay? It has exact value. That is what we are looking for, exact value. So a rational number is just the complete opposite of what I just described, okay? At first, you can express it like this as a fraction, and the decimal form doesn't have an exact value. The only way you can bring out a value that you can use is to approximate, okay? So you're going to see it it's never ending and it's not even following a repeated pattern. All right, so examples of irrational numbers, okay, we can talk about root two, okay, root three, root five, root seven, even numbers like your values like your pi, okay, values like your Euler's number or natural number, okay. So all these are what we refer to as irrational numbers. So we can describe or define sort as an irrational number or as an irrational root because you can see this root when we try to find it what you are going to get is an irrational number you are going to get irrational numbers okay so we can also describe um, sword or define sword okay as taking the square root the result you get by taking the square root of a non-perfect square okay look at two two is a non-perfect square right so we are taking the square root of two what you are going to get of course would be irrational numbers all right when you take this but if you take the square root of a perfect square like four square root of four gives you two two is a rational number so that tells you that root four is a rational number so root four cannot be put forth under what we are trying to describe here okay so you can also describe sword as an expression that contains the radical symbol okay or the radical sign all right and whose value cannot be expressed in exact terms okay or in exact um quantity all right so those are definitions that i can put forward to you consigning sort so let's go to some basic terminologies that will be required or that we need to know when we are going to handle the topic so all right so we have radical radicand operand equiradical sort or sort non equiradical sort we have mixed and pure Sort. Okay, so I'm going to put forth, put forth an expression so that we can use it to explain these terminologies that we have sitting before us. Okay, so let's say I have uh, 
Okay, and um, let's, okay, very well, then I have this. All right, let me just make it here, let me make it here. So, um, I'm going to take it bit by bit. So, we have radical, okay, we have radicand, all right. So, all of these that I have here, 5 root 3, of course, we can refer to it as the radical, okay, all right, then what we have inside here, the value sitting down inside is the radicand. So all of this makes up the radical. What we are having under this um, root sign or the radical sign, okay, is the radicand, please. Correction to that, the radicand. Let me write that properly. Okay, that makes the radicand. Okay, then what I have here, okay, this is the coefficient. This 5 root 3, this 5 here is the coefficient. Okay, and we can tell that the root here can be referred to as the degree, okay, or the index of the root. So let's say, so we can see this, this is the radicand, all right? This whole expression is a radical expression. Okay, this is the coefficient. All right, and the since it's not written here, the root is not written. That means the degree or the uh, index we have here is two, right? So we can say we've explained radical, we've explained radical, and we are left with upper hand, we are left with um, this. Okay, so now look at this expression: five root three, five root three. Okay, is a mixed expression, just like we know, or is a mixed sort, just like we know about. Um, mixed fraction and improper fraction and proper fraction. So you can see it is mixed because there's presence of a coefficient and this, okay, and the roots. So this is a mixed sort. Now a pure sort is just something that just contains the radical symbol, the radical sign alongside the radicand, okay. So this is a pure sort. This is a mixed so, all right, so we can properly say that a radical expression is one that has square roots. Okay, so this is a radical expression. So we've pointed out the radicand. Then I'm going to use an example or some examples to show us the operand. Let's say, for instance, I have something like this. So you can see this two and this three, they are the operands. That is the values operating in that operation, okay? Why this sign that we have here is called the operator. So we just use this knowledge to tap into whatever thing we are going to be doing. So what do we mean when we say a particular sort or swords are equal radical? That is of the same radical or non-equal radical. So this is what we mean. When we say a sword is equal radical, that implies that they have the same degree or index. Look at what I mean. For instance, if I have root 2, right? I have root 3. Let me say 3 root 2, okay? I have 4 root 2. You can see. You can see that the roots that we have here hmm, is the same degree that we are seeing there. Okay, so this tells us that this is equiradical sort. When sorts are non-equiradical, that means I'm going to have something like this. So can we see? So this points to us that the degrees or the index are different. Okay, so these are the basic terminologies that we are required to learn about when we are going to operate with the topic sorts. Okay, so now let's go into the rules or laws of sorts. Okay, we have variety of them, different varieties. All right, so let's look at some rules or laws attached to sorts. Okay, so recall this, right? So you can see this, okay? It's the same thing as saying roots P times roots Q, all right? So you can split the radical symbol for them and each individual will have it. By the time you do that, you are still going to have the same answer. Let me use an instance to prove what I mean. So let's say I have root 4 times 9, okay? 
that will give me root 4, right, times root 9. So let's say we take it directly. 4 times 9, that is 36, equals square root of 4, that is 2, square root of 9, that is 3. Square root of 36, that is 6. 2 times 3, 6. So, we've proven the first law, or one of the laws of sort. Okay, so root p times root q equals root p times root q. Okay, so let's go on to the next law. If I have root p, okay, over q, all right, it's still the same when I say root p over root q. All right, so in mathematics, this fractional bar can be referred to as your vinculum. All right, so let's say I have root p over root q. Okay, it's the same thing that we have here. So let's say root p, let's say p is 4, q is 9. So let's see if that will work for us. So I'm going to have 4 over 9. Okay, I'm still going to have root 4 over root 9. Okay, by the time you still work on this, you are still going to see that you are going to arrive at the same answer. Okay, so this helps us to understand that this is the second law, okay, regarding the rules of sort. Okay, we still have so much laws to still tackle. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. It's going to take you to the My School website. Right there, you can be able to get the details on how you can get the full video content. Please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we put up the next video lesson just for you.